Welcome back to Healing Hype Man. Welcome to my Chiron series. So you're watching this, I don't need these right now. You're watching this if you have Taurus, if your Chiron is in Taurus. And please feel free to go back to my very first video, uh, which will explain what Chiron is, who Chiron is, um, how to find it in your chart. You can go to astroseek.com to kind of get your full birth, birth chart so you can see the sign and the house that it is in. Um, so you're already here because you already know that my Chiron's in Taurus. And down below, you'll also find a description of the house details of the house placement. So the house is going to give you a little bit more, uh, more detail into how this resonates with you and how to heal thyself, how to learn how to heal yourself from this Chiron placement or this wounded healer that part of you that where you either you were either it was given to you in a past lifetime and you were brought here with it or it happened in the wound or happened in childhood. I do. I am going to talk about here a spiritual perspective and a clinical perspective at the same time. So how I would, if this really was a situation that happened with you, how we how we would handle it clinically with as well as some as some tarot as well, which I did not pull. So now I have to do it here because I don't want to stop the video. And also keep in mind, I'm a self-studying astrologer. I am a self-taught tarot reader, and I'm a mental health clinic, clinician in training. So all of my resources that I gathered for this reading uh, will be down in the description box below in case you'd like to go deeper. Uh, I do. I wouldn't be here trying to entice those of you to heal yourself that want to heal yourself um, if I didn't think that it was valuable and I wouldn't be healing hype man if we didn't talk about things like this. So any little nugget of knowledge, information that I find, I feel the need to share. So let's kind of dive in. Taurus, Chiron and Taurus. So you guys truly know how to hold on to your pain. Whew, right? Um, you actually have gotten comfortable with your pain. And there is a point in time where like you, you deal with it very, very slowly, right? Which is very Taurus energy, very slow moving. Um, but you hold on to it for a long time, like a while to the point where it boils over and then, and then you decide to heal it. Um, but you do wallow. Wow. That's a powerful phrase I wrote there. You wallow in your agony for a while. Um, and perhaps it's just from not, not having the awareness about it. Perhaps it's just not knowing things that you can do. Perhaps it's, it's just you're unaware of it or, or didn't even realize that this was a part of you that, was, that, that happened to you as a child here. Um, so during this transit, as Chiron is, is, is moving into Aries or will be in Aries for a while, I think about six months, uh, I kind of wrote down some things on how you can heal this part of you, right? So um, I have a question here. Where have you allowed the feeling of lack, material or physical, to take over, right? So there is some sort of deep-seated like lack of material things. Um, you felt as a child a true lack of resources or a very real loss, right? You lost something very valuable, or perhaps you were just raised in, in, a, in a very in a poverty, in a in a below the poverty line. Um, so, right, there's an aspect there of of, of resources at the same time. Um, and, and perhaps you feel like you're not worthy of more or worthy of stability or worthy of a fat paycheck or worthy of a foundation or worthy of money. And some healing components here is first and foremost, please give compassion to your inner child for putting up with that situation, right? Those are the cards that you were dealt according to the Chiron placement. It's something that just either you were born with it or it happened at a very young age and give compassion to your inner child for putting up with that situation. Um, for this, for this placement, I would say these are more of the hand, the cards that you were dealt, per se. And know that you can choose to create stability in your life by making wise and practical choices, right? So if you want to have, you know, a solid foundation, a home with a fat bank account and stability and, and material things at the same time, you have that capacity to do so as long as you put a little bit of practicality and making wise choices, right? You want to attain the feeling of peace that supports you, right? What is safe for you? What is secure for you? What is protective for thyself, right? So that's kind of the direction we're going there for. Now here for, on a clinical perspective, I would look at, I would look at your resources, right? So we'll kind of take a dive into like, what, what does stability, stability look like for you? What, what's your relationship to money, right? Am I worthy of money? Am I worthy of more? 
And 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 because it's a lot of you be you be really surprised at the amount of people that just don't feel worthy of it, or it's not something that they've ever attained, or they don't think they can attain or they can achieve. So we're gonna look at a lot a lot of your uh, a lot of aspects of you and like what you think you're worth and where where you think you can be resourceful in the world. What value can you bring to 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 whatever it is that you're doing or whatever it is the direction that you want to go into, right? We also want to look at safety. Perhaps we might have to revisit, you know. Where did you feel like there was a lack in your life? Where did you feel like there wasn't enough, enough stability, right? Perhaps it was, it was um, the home was, was, I'm just gonna say, perhaps it was just a very unhealthy home environment and you didn't really have a secure place to live. Perhaps we need to revisit those, right? And then look at that negative self-talk that you might be telling yourself, like, I'm not worthy of this because I've never had it or I don't understand it. Um, and kind of really look at what your highlights are, where we can excel you into the into the next into the next, like excel you in the sense so that you feel stable, secure, confident, in many directions. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say it might be self esteem here. I really would just say it's more of like worthiness. Am I? Do I feel worthy of this? Do I feel worthy of that? And perhaps take a look at going back in the past and seeing, you know, where did where was the first time you felt that you weren't worthy of something? Or where was the first time you felt a lack of security? It overall could just be like, I, I just didn't feel safe. And now moving forward, I just want to do things that are safe and what that looks like for you. Because um, not for everybody do they actually want to attain wealth. Sometimes it can honestly just be like, I just want to have a safe home to go to. Um, so we really would explore what is safe and secure for you and how you define that. On a spiritual perspective here, I have, so this, this is actually the, the wound here. It's a nine of pentacles and or the queen of, queen of pentacles in reverse, right? A lack of resources, a lack of maybe the mother-like figure in your life didn't have the capacity to give you those resources. She couldn't provide you with those things, right? And the nine of pentacles is a single lady and this is a lack of resources. This is actually also doing the work, but here it's like you're not doing the work to attain stability in your life. So... Right? We would want to do anything that we can to bring these from, from reversed from reverse to right side up, right? Having resources, right? Utilizing the resources and looking at the resources that you already have and that you have created up until this point and finding that sense of stability for you. The nine of pentacles is my, my cute and sweet lady, my cute and single lady, you know, birdie on my finger. Like if you're not with me, like like birdie on my finger, like this is how I'm going to do things because this works out for me. I have secured the fruits of my loins are at the top. My pentacles are secure and safe, right? Perhaps some of you just want to have a certain amount of money in your bank account and that would give you the sense of safety and security that you're in. Um, you know, but for a long time, you might have been holding on to this agony of like, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy. And you might not have even realized that. And now as you go, you know, into your adult life, Money could be a struggle. Wealth could be a struggle. Security could be a struggle for you. Holding a job could be a struggle for you because you don't think that you're worthy of that. Or really you want to take a look at your relationship to money and how you might very well attain that. What resources do you have, right? What, how much work, effort, and work putting into things? Perhaps you don't put a lot of work into things because naturally you're like, oh, I don't really see the outcome or I don't get enough for it to be worth my time. So these are the cards that I would associate there. And again, we're going to look at, at your commitment to, to, to sticking to something, you know, for a long period of time and, and the levels of security that you gain from that, right? A job, do you feel advancement within a job, within a job placement or the work environment that you're in? Does that validate you? What really truly validates you and what is safety and security for you? Um, I think that's all I wanted to say. And yeah, let me, so I'm also going to give you a little quote. I'm going to randomly just pick a page from um, young Pablo, clarity and connection. And it, they, they seem to be really resonating with you, with these. It is easier to trust people who recognize when you have made a mistake and are not afraid to apologize. This is a sign that they have enough humility to be open to growth. A fresh start begins with forgiveness and trust is greatly deepened when changed behavior becomes consistent. Well, thank you for that reminder here. Consistency in what you're doing. Perhaps you lacked consistency in things. Right? There's that aspect of forgiving at the same time, forgiving the people, places and things that 
that the cards that you were dealt, right? You, they, you did the best, they did the best they could with the tools that they had at that time. And again, this Taurus placement is really like a lack of resources as a child, which means that you were just born into that, right? So forgiving and, and forgiving those people for the situation that they're in. And it's now it's time for you to take control and you put consistent effort into things to make your life stable, secure, and safe for you, however you define all of those things, because they can be very different for each person. A fresh start begins with forgiveness, and trust is greatly deepened when changed behavior becomes consistent. That key word is consistent there for the Taurus as well. So take a look at your house placement below so you can kind of put pieces together. And thank you for watching. My name is Alvin Catalan. I am present. I'm done speaking now.